Continuing from the previous video where I tested some nylon bridge material, I was wrapped with the sheer strength that this uh, nylon bridge material has, but I was disappointed with the amount of flexibility uh, that a, a printed part uh, has with this nylon bridge. So, the nice people over at Tallman 3D have sent some of their other material for me to try, and in front of us here is their Alloy 910 filament. Let's give it a go. As this material comes in one pound spools, I was going to design and print out a new uh, spool holder for the small diameter that the, uh, this spool comes with. However, I just ended up rewinding the filament from this spool onto an existing spare spool I had, as I've already got spool holders lying around, and it was much faster for me to get printing. Looking closer at this filament, the texture is quite smooth. Uh, unlike the nylon bridge filament, this particular filament has a very slight colour to it. Uh, the Tallman 3D website uh, calls this a slight amber colour. And also, just like the, uh, the nylon bridge material, this is also quite, uh, quite, quite flexible. Probably a little bit stiffer than the nylon bridge, but certainly much more flexible than, uh, than an ABS type material. And once again, if I uh, try to bend this back on itself, I'm feeling a lot of resistance, probably uh, more resistance here than what I was uh, experiencing with the nylon bridge. So that's a good start in uh, understanding if this material is going to have more rigidity and less flexibility than the nylon bridge. And here is the Peon 230 quadcopter arm printed in Alloy 910 material. Now before I get into the advantages and disadvantages of this material, the first thing I want to mention is how good the finished print looks with this material. I'm not sure what it is, uh, I'm not sure if it's the slicing program that I've used, I've used Cura here, whereas the other uh, uh, quadcopter arm I used Slicer, but this one looks absolutely beautiful and I'm thinking that it's it's this Alloy 910 material that is uh, making this, this part look, uh, look quite nice. Uh, okay, so what I like about this uh, Alloy 910, exactly the same as with the, uh, the nylon bridge, it printed at 245 degrees Celsius, so that means pretty much every hot end out there can print with this material. It also stuck to the blue painter's tape uh, on the heat bed uh, without a problem as well, so you don't need any uh, exotic uh, build material to print with this product. Uh, also, there was virtually no odour or smell uh, to note with this material, so that was a bonus. However, just like when printing any material, you always want to have some uh, ventilation in the room. Uh, and finally, uh, unlike the nylon bridge, I didn't notice any uh, sizzling or popping or any other uh, moisture uh, type um, uh, phenomenon with this material. It printed uh, virtually clean, so I guess uh, as I've got a whole roll of this, I'll see if it maintains um, the, the dryness that it has or if it does develop that hissing and popping as it absorbs moisture over time. Okay, so the big question, is this flexible like the nylon bridge? Well, there's only one way to find out. 
come on. Oh. Well, this is much, much stiffer than the nylon bridge. If I can get that to focus, yes you are. And it's pretty much come back to shape. I've tried to bend that, I'll do that again. And this is, I'm putting a lot of pressure on here. Oh. That is sensational. Well, we can honestly say that this uh, nylon alloy 910 is much, much more rigid than the, uh, than the nylon bridge. So that was the big disadvantage that I had with the nylon bridge. I'll just bring that into, into frame now. So this is the nylon bridge from the last video. And that's, you know, it's almost taking no effort at all to, you know, twist and, and bend this, this particular one. But this one here printed exactly the same. Uh, we're talking, you know, three perimeters, three top and bottom layers, 50% infill, and that is that is chalk and cheese. That is so much more rigid. So I think this material is going to be an absolute winner for quadcopter frames. That is fantastic. And the other thing about this Alloy 910 as opposed to the uh, nylon bridge is I didn't notice any uh, oozing or at least nowhere near the amount of oozing that the nylon bridge had. So um, this material is is I guess on par with like a PLA or ABS that you know if you get the temperature and retraction settings right you can you can print without having to worry about you know cleaning up any any oozy mess so that was really really good to see well it bends a little bit but that that slight bit of bending is not going to hamper I don't think a quadcopter frame at all at least not at the scale of the Peon 230 uh, we're not going to receive any you know vibration problems or anything with this because it is quite quite stiff but um, I'd just like to see how far I can actually bend this and uh, because I can't actually do that by hand I've just got some hand tools here that I'll uh, that I'll be gripping this part with and let's see if you know we can break it or or how far we can we can bend this so I'll uh, I'll give it a, a good grip and uh, let's bend that I'm putting a lot of force on that yeah that's <laughs> That's pretty strong. I mean, looking at that, that hasn't um, that hasn't split, that hasn't torn. Uh, I'll let go of this now. Let's see if that'll spring back into shape. I don't think it. Oh, it's kind of moving. It is moving. I think if I left it here long enough, it might spring back. Maybe. Well, let's let's help it out. I'll see if I can bend that back flat by hand. It's pretty good. Make that a bit straighter. I'm quite happy with that. I think on a, on a big crash you're not going to like break the part. Worst case scenario I think you're just going to you know bend an arm which is going to be good in a crash because that's going to absorb the majority of the energy of the impact. So that's probably a, a benefit to have some flexibility there than it just being totally stiff like for example a PLA and then just just snapping so and being able to I guess you know bend it back at the field without having you know tools or having to swap this arm around I'm really happy with that So here's the same part again, this time a solid piece. So this is at 100% infill. Just comparing this to the other arm printed at 50%, you can just see that this, this one here is a little darker in colour than, than the one printed at 50%. Um, so that slight amber colour is more pronounced when it's a solid piece than when it's uh, only half filled. So let's now test the flexibility to see if Printing a solid piece is any stiffer than printing at 50%. So once again, this is the one at 50%. Yeah, it's quite quite solid. Uh, however, you know there is a little bit of flex there, but it's not going to be too much of an issue. Moving on to the one that's printed at 100%. Let's give that a bend and see if it's any different. Uh, I think by hand, it's it's a little it's definitely a little stiffer again. But I can still kind of bend that. It's not totally rigid. 
Um, I wonder how it's going to fare with uh, with the hand tools though. So once again, let's just grip that. Uh, the pliers there and the, the multi grips on on this side, and we'll see if it's any uh, any different. Oh, yeah, that's much stiffer actually. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot stiffer at 100%. And will it bend back to shape? Probably not. Probably not, because the other material, or the other infill didn't. But uh, it's pretty close. And once again, I guess I can just bend that straight if I have a big impact at the field. Pretty happy with that. So if 50% isn't enough, I guess you can go up to 100% and um, be quite content that... Uh, this would potentially be an indestructible quadcopter frame. Do we go as far as saying it's stronger than a carbon fiber frame? Hmm. Let's now check the weight difference between the arm printed at 50% and the arm printed at 100%. So we'll try the 50% the infill arm first and check the weight. We can get about 8.6 grams for that one, 8.7. Now we'll move over to the solid piece. 10.8 so we're looking at two grams heavier or about 25 percent heavier for a solid infill so that's interesting oh i guess because most of this part is is perimeters and top and bottom layers rather than uh, just infill so a penalty of you know two grams per arm for that little bit of extra rigidity uh, i think that might be a, a fair price to pay uh, for peace of mind and finally with the disadvantages of this material um, first of all, even though it is quite rigid, there is still some flexibility there. So if that amount of flexibility is too much for your particular application, well then this nylon material probably won't be suitable uh, for whatever uh, purpose that you need, which requires a totally stiff part. Uh, and lastly, uh, this material, it isn't the cheapest, and it comes in one pound or 450 gram rolls. So, uh, if you purchase a spool of this, I'd recommend testing the part that you wish to print on cheaper filament first to ensure, ensure that the, uh, the slicing G-code is correct and the finished print, uh, the, the sides of the part is also uh, exactly what, what you need before printing with this more expensive material. Um, but I guess you can think of it this way, I should be able to print five full sets of the Peon 230 quadcopter frames with just the one pound roll. So I guess if you split the cost into five, that's actually pretty cheap, especially if this material is indestructible.